What's the story behind your name? Do people ever mistake you for being a woman? Oh, all the time. Although if you really check the dictionary, you know if it's spelled with an A, it's supposed to be a male name. How do you juggle the workload of being a minister and MP since you're abroad so often? With great difficulty. I try to do all my travelling from Tuesday to the Friday and try to spend the weekend and Mondays in the constituency and with meet the people sessions. What country surprised you the most when you visited it? I was in Slovakia some years ago and the tour guide, the most moving thing was when she said, you know, we have been colonised, invaded, been under other countries for 700 years and more. But we are independent, we have our own identity. Coming from a place like Singapore, where it's only been 55 years, to hear that you know, had a profound impact on me. How did Kim Jong-un react when you asked to take a selfie with him? We were walking around in the dome and then the CEO of NPARC said, oh, this is the place where people always take selfies. So we whipped out our camera and just took that shot. How do you build relationship with uh, foreign ministers, like how do, you, how do you make them remember you or like you? So the first point is to establish rapport as fellow human beings, to get to know each other. Frankly, a lot of diplomacy is conducted through WhatsApp and other message platforms. It's informal, our staff get very nervous that we might say things or give away things. It lends a sense of immediacy and intimacy, which you will not get just with formal letters or even at formal meetings. Can you summarise Singapore's foreign policy principles in one sentence? Foreign policy begins at home because you have no foreign policy if you don't stand for something, if you don't defend something. There is no foreign policy. What was it like growing up with teachers for parents? Both of them, in fact, met because they were teachers in Bukit Panjang School. It's wonderful that I still represent the constituency in which the school is in. The lesson which I've taken from there is that it is very important to stimulate and to encourage children when they are young. It's got profound impact on their futures. What strategies do we have if we can't rely on international trade for survival? Although global trade is being depressed by COVID-19 and by the geostrategic tensions between the United States and China, it is not going to go down to zero. It also illustrates the need for diversification, advanced manufacturing, digital services, finances, and all those other services and industries are also multiple cylinders of our economic engine. Why isn't there a way for Singaporeans to study or work overseas to vote online? Right now, manual counting and a manual system works. We have legitimacy, we have faith and trust in the outcome, and I think that's very important. But let's keep options open for the future. Since you're in charge of Smart Nation, do you know how to code? If yes, which language is your favourite? I'm a completely self-taught coder. Started off with BASIC, I did Pascal, DBase in the old days. Uh, currently, today, it's more on, on Python. One of my interesting projects was to convert PM Lee's code for solving Sudoku. He wrote it in C. I translated it into JavaScript so that it runs in a browser. What was the hardest issue that you have tackled as a minister? The hardest issue actually is right now, the crisis that we are facing. Health and the economic impact, the anxiety about jobs. This is a crisis which we are still, still dealing with. Facebook statistics said that in GE 2015, you were Singapore's best performing politician. Social media is more powerful than ever, especially in this GE. Do you think that the same thing could happen this year? All these digital means are just supplements or catalysts. So yes, I do my best to stay in touch, to remain available. But I think this is an extra. This is not the real thing. Favourite thing about Bukit Panjang besides Kerkomen? What makes me proud is that everything that has been done there came about from ideas from the residents who live there. You come to Bangswa Pond, you walk around the boardwalk, still keep this place green and clean and sustainable. What are some of the common concerns brought up by residents of Holland Bukit Timah GRC? They're worried about their children, 
those who are just graduating, will they be able to get a good job or they can't get a good job, how should they spend the next one to two years? Should they go back to school or can they get an attachment, an internship? So the focus very much is on jobs. Holland Bukit Tima GRC sounds like a very atas GRC because of Holland and Bukit Tima. So uh, is it really an atas GRC? No, I would not describe it as an atas GRC. I would describe it as a very diverse GRC. We've got rental flats, we've got big bungalows and everything in between. So we represent a diverse slice of life in Singapore. You have contested in the GE since 2001. It has almost been 20 years since then. How has the PAP evolved to meet the people's needs? In every election, the PAP replaces something between one quarter to one third of our MPs. So the first point is to continually refresh our ranks with younger people, with people with diverse perspectives. The other thing which has changed, people expect far more interaction. In the past, they would come to meet the people sessions. We see them every week. Today, more people come to me directly through email and through other electronic platforms or even WhatsApp than actually physically see me at the Meet the People session. Why is there no Indian representation among the new candidates? Simple answer, none of the current Indian candidates are stepping down. Our regional neighbours will probably be watching our GE quite closely. So how do you think their opinions would differ if PP's performance was closer to that of 2011 than 2015? Well, I don't want to make predictions, but yes, our neighbours watch us and they're watching us to see how united we will be and whether we will be able to stand up to them if we need to. How would you react if you ran into Paul Tambia while both of you were on a walkabout? I've known Paul for many decades. We're both doctors, we're both with the university except I'm on leave. I would treat him the same way I treat a, a, a colleague and someone whom I've known for, for a long time. What do you think is the PAP's biggest challenge this election? The biggest challenge is the crisis that we're going through. This is a global pandemic. Lives are being lost, although fortunately we have one of the lowest mortality rates in the world. Secondly, this is the biggest global depression since the Great Depression in 1930s. So just dealing with these two crises and the aftermath of this crisis and what we need to do for the next few years, and you notice I said the next few years, because the structural changes, the transformation that we need economically, socially, politically, is going to take us a lot of time and a lot of effort. What's the story behind your name? Do people ever mistake you for being a woman? Oh, all the time. <laughs> I told you my father was a teacher in Bukit Panjang. But he also decided he wanted to become a lawyer. And he enrolled for the first part-time uh, law course that the University of Singapore was running. So one of the lectures, he was very impressed by an Indian Supreme Court judge whose name I think happened to be Vivian Bose. So he was so impressed that uh, I guess when I came along, he decided to use the same name for me. My name is one of those names which is often also used by, by women. Although if you really check the dictionary, you know if it's spelled with an A, it's supposed to be a male name. So I've always had to deal with this. It's a conversation piece. 